events, both from St. Faith and St. Mary's, on this Advent Sunday, the start of the new church year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as, as we enter today this time and solemn season of Advent, in which the Church bids us prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ, a coming that we recall in the child of Bethlehem, a coming that we experience in the gift of His Spirit, in the bread of the Eucharist, in the joy of human lives that are shared, a coming we wait for when God gathers up all things in Christ. Let us in this holy season reflect on the coming of Christ, who brings light to the world. Let us leave behind the darkness of sin, walk in the light that shines on our path, and renew within ourselves the hope of glory to which he beckons us. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. It is time for us to wake out of sleep. The deliverance is nearer to us now than it was when we first believed. It is far on in the night, day is near. Let us therefore cast off the deeds of darkness and put on the armour as soldiers of the light. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins. Open your eyes to God's truth. Strengthen you to do God's will. And give you the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to our Advent wreath, which Irene has so lovingly decorated for us this year. And we light the first candle. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors, to you be praise and glory forever. You call the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfilment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and a light upon our path. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us through the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. 
From ages past no one has heard, no ear has seen, no eye has seen any God beside you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on you for your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 18. Show us the light of your countenance, O Lord God of hosts, and we shall be saved. Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, you that led Joseph like a flock. Shine forth near the torrent throne upon the cherubim, before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your mighty strength and come to our salvation. Turn us again, O God, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You feed them with the bread of tears. You give them abundance of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbours, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, O Lord of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man at your right hand, the son of man you make so strong for yourself. Show the light of your countenance, O Lord God of hosts, and we shall be saved. And so we will not go back from you, give us light, and we shall call upon your name. Turn us again, O Lord of God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender, and puts forth its leaves. You know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Pope Christ. I speak in the name of the living God, who is creator, saviour, and life giver. Amen. Today we begin the new church's year, the year on which we focus on St. Mark's Gospel. And the Gospel today is one of those ones that we struggle with. It talks about our Lord coming in judgment and tells us to be ready. Yet, 2,000 plus years later, we are still waiting. We've done a lot of waiting this year. It was about 12 months ago we first heard about coronavirus. But it was a long way away. And we probably dismissed it as just another terrible disease in countries far away that would not affect us. And yet it did arrive very quickly. And we've been living with its dreadful consequences since then. And I think secretly we've all been hoping from March that one day we will turn a corner and all the good things of life, like being with people and going out and doing things and not having to wear masks and keep cleansing our hands, all those things will be a thing past. But for now, they remain. One of the most important things we've all missed is human contact. You can see and hear things via TV screens and computers and telephones, but machines don't hug people. And for many, the promise of seeing family at Christmas will be a lift in these times. We've been through a year when Easter and festivals of other faiths like Passover, Eid, Diwali have all been detailed. Perhaps not in a spiritual sense, because worship has continued, but in terms of communities and extended families gathering and literally sharing food and fellowship together. Private prayer works for Christians, it doesn't quite work for other people, because faith is very much a community thing. And as Christians, we can feel spiritually that, yes, we are one with each other, as we are in this service, but it's not quite the same as when the church is full of people. Advent is a word with two meanings. It's about coming. It's also about arriving. Last week in the parable of the sheep and the goats, we saw the coming of our Lord on the throne of judgment, exalted in great power and glory. But the parable kind of turns it all on its head because we're told that the king was already present in the suffering humanity that people saw around them. So in effect, he'd already arrived. So we look up, but in no uncertain terms, we're told to look down too. Isaiah's prophecy tells of a people who felt that God wasn't concerned with them any longer. They were waiting for the God of creation and the God of Exodus to intervene in history and rescue them from exile. They've been in exile literally a whole generation. The old folk had died, their children had raised children of their own, they become very settled. prophet reminds the exiles that they need to reawaken their faith in the God who is at work amongst them. He 
take us a very simple example the potter with his ball of clay the potter that literally takes the clay and shapes it into something beautiful in the same way in the creation story that God took the clay of the ground and shaped it into Adam and Eve and then breathed life into them the prophet reminds us that God is the potter and we are the clay we are the ones that God shapes in this world to do his will We have the frailty of common clay about us. But we also need to depend on our Father in heaven, who gives us life. Advent may be subsumed under the guise of Christmas commerce. We hear about lots of Advent calendars nowadays. And 99% of them don't seem to have anything about Christianity in them anymore. But we all love chocolate, don't we? This is a season when we prepare for the coming of the Christ child at Christmas. God here among us in human form. St. Mark speaks of reading the signs of the times but not being confused into thinking that the judgment has arrived by others. There have been many dates foretold in the past when the world would end, and we've passed an awful lot of them. I can remember being told at university that the last church would close in 2013, while well, we're still here. Waiting in faith for the Master, who may return at any time. Acts of faith make up our lives as Christians. Simple acts that we do every day as we pray, as we care for others, as we seek forgiveness at the altar. In 1914, Sarajevo was a place where the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand started the First World War. It was the city too where Christians, Jews and Muslims lived peaceably together, till in 1992, at the breakup of Yugoslavia, it became the focus of a terrible civil war. The city was regularly shelled and the people literally lived in shelters. Theatre was no longer safe for productions. Cultural life was at an end. In America, the producer, Susan Sontag, responded to a cry for help from the people there. In alarming fighting, she came to the war-torn city and produced in their shell-scarred theatre one of Samuel Beckett's plays, Waiting for Goddard. Despite fear of shelling and power cuts, people came and filled that theatre that night. Susan Sontag had decided that one act was enough, two acts might be unsafe and the power in the city wouldn't last that long. But for the people in the audience that night, there was a sign that somebody from outside of their war-torn city cared enough to come. Someone cared enough to risk the people's difficulties. The play Waiting for Godot, which I was taken to in my university days by a group of friends, doesn't conclude 
because Cotto still hasn't arrived by the end of the play. Perhaps a sign of where that city was at that point. But at the end of the first act, the audience cried tears of joy because the first act was a sign that one day the second act would follow and did. In these times, we need to live with faith and perseverance to stay awake for what God might be unveiling around us. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. In the Diocese of Liverpool today, we remember West Derby Deanery and the Church of the Good Shepherd, West Derby, the Poppy Thor and Hand Hanslip, the LaSalle School, St John Mosco School. We remember our churches as we prepare to reopen next Sunday and we think about how to celebrate Christmas. We pray for Archbishops Justin and Stephen, our Bishops Paul and Beverly, Archdeacon Pete, Andrew Scott, our area dean, and for our sister churches in this deanery and ecumenically in Waterloo and Crosby. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for America and the President-elect Joe Biden. We pray too for refugees and asylum seekers and those who help them. We pray for the government and the European Union in their discussions over future trading relationships. And at this time of pandemic, we pray for governments, for the World Health Organization, for cooperation in vaccinations in poorer countries and across the world for health workers, hospitals, doctors, surgeries and clinics, for scientists. We remember in our own community those who care for the elderly in homes and at home, the teachers and children at schools, for businesses and those struggling with loss of income and livelihood, for the unemployed, the food banks and the volunteers that work with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those with coronavirus and those who are self-isolating. And in our churches, we remember Joyce Sharp, Ada Slater, Max Tobin, Jack Daly, John Crook, Miriam Jones, Ken Bramwell, Stephen and Rani Senevarati, Avis Port, Russell Bamber, Samuel Andrew, Pat McKay, Diane Forshaw, Helen Jones, Tracy Riley, Cliff Butler, Elaine Brown, John Pierce, Pat Turney, Dave O'Brien, Margaret MacDonald, and Joan McCorkle. Pray too for Baby Huey, Eileen McGuire, Graham Forrest, Linda Burns, Denise Greger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially those whose anniversaries fall at this time. 
We pray for Fred and Doris Colton, Thomas Groves, Edward Wallace, Alexander McWinney, Arthur Brown, Bill Reed, Nellie Dyson, Kim Meacher, Rupert Penneva, Daisy Proctor, Joseph Barrow, Emily Comte, Ruth Calloway, Helen Osbaldson, Laura Holly Smith, Joseph Henry Bates, Eunice Watts, and Alma Burns. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Joining our prayers with our Blessed Lady, St. Faith, and all your saints, we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, give light to those who dwell in darkness, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Peace to you wherever you are today. Thanks to modern technology and the Church of England, we now have pre-recorded him. Bless these gifts to our use and ourselves in your service. Amen. As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. Wisdom has built her a house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, O God, forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, 
we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so the Father calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the remission of the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Faith and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As we wait in joyful expectation for the coming of his kingdom, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Receive this on my behalf and yours too. The body of Christ will keep you in eternal life. Amen. Christ keep you in eternal life.
O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out from the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, there's just one notice, and it's one I'm sure you'll be very excited about. The government has allowed us to worship again in church from Wednesday. And so on Thursday morning at 12 noon, there will be the Eucharist, celebrated by the Reverend Denise. And next Sunday at 11 o'clock, there will be the Eucharist. It'll be our annual toy service, so if you have any toys for the Sefton Toy Appeal, then please, please bring them with you. <clears throat> and the Reverend Father Bill um, will be celebrating, and Paula, our reader, will be preaching next week. I look forward to seeing you all in person very soon. With love and justice, come Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come Lord Jesus. In power and glory, come Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come Lord Jesus. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine before you, scatter the darkness from before your car, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.